Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. I wonder who will. I wonder who will turn up for this. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see if anyone does turn up for this. We are live, though. We got a Halo multiplayer overview starting in just just over 15 minutes. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see who from the channel actually turns up. This is not a title that has much affinity with the viewers of this channel. Um, I'm fully aware of that. But I think it's fair to see what Halo have to offer. Um, to, I'm interested in the multiplayer. I think, if anything, I'd be more interested in the multiplayer aspect than the campaign, to a degree. But that's just me, you know. I have many a good memory of playing Halo. Uh, this is just—I'm just running the trailer that we got previously in the background for now on a loop. They might be struggling to play it. Oh, it's not even—it's not even in fully in full HD. I don't know why it's struggling to do that. Um, but yeah, I think it's fair enough to take a look and see how how the um, multiplayer is going to look. They showed us a glimpse of it there, Valhalla, a classic map being re-shown, uh, slightly updated, which I'm looking forward to. But yeah, uh, Angel, how you doing? Connor, how you doing? Gregory, I don't know what you said earlier, but I can't read it because it's not in English. Uh, really one gamer, how you doing? Connor, good to have you, man. Path Gaming, Caesar, Marco, saying me a random. Hey, man, welcome welcome to this. It should be fun. I, I'm, I have no problem with seeing what... What, what they're up to with the new Halo game. As, I, as I've mentioned multiple times, Halo's a game that I hold pretty close to my heart. Uh, and while I super did enjoy the campaign overall, as I was mentioning a bit yesterday, is it is all about the multiplayer. I think the multiplayer is really where Halo thrived at a time uh, where multiplayer games weren't the biggest thing. You had things like Unreal Tournament, um, you had like glimpses of what COD was going to become obviously more around the time of Halo 3 you actually had Modern Warfare which was a, a, a very classic sort of um, introduction into what multiplayer gaming is heavily like nowadays but there was a time where you know like Halo really had a great grasp on multiplayer overall you know uh, and while there were other games and stuff I think Halo really sort of nailed it wasn't too advanced, but it was also like not simple enough. And I think they did a great job of it, you know? Uh, as you can sort of see in these little scenes here, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but there were some really fun game modes in Halo. Uh, and that, that, that's pretty much what I have to say. That He literally just picked up one of those like fusion battery things with the grapple hook and then threw it at a warthog, which is a pretty cool move. Because uh, those things explode. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they show in this overview. Which will start at 4pm, which is 10 minutes away. So, I want to see some some good work from Halo, you know. I want to see them really understanding that the multiplayer is where a lot of the people that still love the franchise, where their head's at. And this looks, it looks better in this trailer than it did in the stream. I think everything in the stream yesterday was heavily compressed. Because when we looked at that Battlefield trailer, it just looked glorious in the 4K version. But in the stream, it didn't look that impressive at all. Same with Halo. This looks a lot better actually watching it on the uploaded version than the stream version. But yeah, there's something about the combat that was just so enjoyable, man. When you got, like... You killed like three or four people and came out on top you really did feel like like the master chief you know you felt like a god uh when you started to get those call outs from the announcers he's like double kill triple kill multi kill all of that kind of stuff um really really did make the online element just so much fun playing it with friends as well being in a party just just so so awesome uh, and great memories. Maybe I have nostalgia glasses on a bit for Halo, but I also don't think I do. I remember playing Halo, uh, the Master Chief Collections online, not not too long ago, maybe a year ago, for a little bit. I still had it. 
I was still killing it, you know. Um, it was it was a lot of fun, and I think what they did really well with their playlists is they had a lot of variety and a lot of really fun game modes as well. So yeah, I'm not I'm not exactly mad. It also had uh, customization on the maps and stuff. You could like build your own map. It, like there's loads of cool stuff. There was loads of really cool stuff. So that's why I'm interested in the multiplayer overview today. Uh, more than anything the campaign is like look since the since the trilogy i've not really been as invested in the storyline for the campaign anyway uh so i really couldn't care less i know for some reason a lot of people are like really holding the campaign to it uh like they need it to be a certain level and stuff for the campaign but for me just in the same way that i feel about battlefield and things like that like it's about the multiplayer what made halo so great was the multiplayer yeah the campaign was epic but it's you know looking back on it and stuff i can see why not everyone got invested there was a lot especially in the first halo second halo where it is just core and even going into the third there's a lot of just corridor combat where you're just going through corridors uh and thing you know like enemies pop out at you and that's that there wasn't like this whole massive set piece things until like maybe the last level or a couple levels had some decent sort of set piece scenarios but overall uh, none of that really mattered because you you wanted to just get in there and battle it out uh, to become the best. Uh, no, it starts at, at four o'clock, so we've got eight minutes to go. Um, and I'm just interested to see. For me as well, because because I'm trying to see like where the devs are at, and I think there's devs going to be talking in this. That to me will also let me know if they're in the sort of right right mind frame. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised we haven't had a Halo film yet. Uh, screw the campaign, multiplayer is where the game shines. Exactly, exactly, like, exa exactly that point, man. Uh, it was, it was just fun chaos, uh, and fair a lot of the time. Sometimes you did get absolutely stomped, but the way that it worked with the sort of health and shield combination, um, and the weapons, like, there wasn't so much weapons that anyone could sort of dominate the map easily. You just had to actually get good to dominate the map. Which I think is something that uh, is a little bit lost in some multiplayers these days. But yeah, Halo had like a really nice balance on it all. And it really did just come down to if you had better reflexes and were, were quicker to the punch and things like that. Uh, it, really, it really was a nice sort of balanced online shooter when it came to multiplayer, uh, you know? Um, I ain't paying £60 for the next-gen price of an FPS with no campaign. Yeah, well, this is the thing. People keep bringing up this point for like things like um, Battlefield and stuff, but it's like, who wants a Battlefield campaign? The only people that complain and use this as like, I'm not going to get a game because of it doesn't have campaign when the game's predominantly a multiplayer scenario anyway, it's like... You just don't enjoy the multiplayer, so so don't get the game anyway. You know, like the campaign is usually second in, in I'd say in these three franchises overall. And like COD's had some amazing campaigns, and Battlefield's had some decent campaigns. Uh, I don't really have any standouts for Battlefield campaign wise, but what you remember from those, and same with Halo, is like I'm saying, is the multiplayer element is 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 where it lives and thrives. It's that's the excitement. So I don't expect people that like aren't on board with that multiplayer element to invest in a multiplayer game anyway you know um like it is what it is but i think people were just using this just say you don't like multiplayer like you know just say you don't enjoy multiplayer i think people were using the the crutch of being like it doesn't have a campaign so i can't enjoy it it's like well no ultimately you just don't enjoy multiplayer as a format because if you did then the price tag wouldn't mean it because while you can say that the campaign may only last 30 hours tops in a good situation, like in, in a good situation, you know? Um, but multiplayer can last you years. A good multiplayer game that you invest in can you last so much longer than a campaign and have so much more re replayability. So to kind of treat a game like it's not a full game, but just because it's focused on multiplayer is like... You know, it's 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 kind of like a, a ludicrous argument because that's what you're going to end up sinking your teeth into. Um, we bought Overwatch for 60 and that had no single player. Yeah, exactly. And Overwatch is a really fun game. And guess what? The campaign elements, when they try and do like, uh, you know, the, um, the little like special events where they make it like PvE, 
those really aren't that enjoyable because they never designed the game to be in that that situation uh, overall, you know. And and with multiplayer, you generally get more and more investment over the time. I don't agree with if you're going to make it a multiplayer game um, to then also charge for DLC and things like that. I think that's where you can sort of draw a line with it. But most of the time, multiplayer games do overall give you a, a lot more for your money because, as I'm saying hours of endless fun and upgrades over time so i don't know i i, I just seen a lot of people sort of be like oh battlefield doesn't have a campaign so i'm not going to pay money for it in the same way that they were like oh returnal doesn't have a save so i'm not going to pay money for it and stuff and it's like it's completely fine just to be like i'm not on board with this just because i don't like you know like i do enjoy multiplayer but that doesn't mean the campaign has to suffer for it yeah but in a game like battlefield what are you going to get? You're going to get like a, a, a very easy played out like couple of cliche missions that you've probably played on a previous COD or previous Battlefield and they've done it better or whatever. Or the developer can actually spend all of their time on... Um, spend all of their time on actually making sure that the multiplayer experience is the absolute best that it can be and moving into an endeavor where you're going with like 128 players i kind of would prefer that the devs have a, a, a grasp and full-on concentration on what they're trying to deliver because that's a it's a it's a big thing to to nail uh going into like the next gen or whatever you want to call it it looks stunning from all of the gameplay stuff even in alpha uh yeah, when was the last time you heard someone talk about Battlefield's campaign? Like, it's just, it's just not synonymous with the, the 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 product overall. And I think it's a smart choice just to be like, we're gonna go all out and focus on the stuff that we do our best. Uh, I'm just going, I'm just saying, go back and play Battlefield V campaign. Uh, tell me that's the story you're playing. Um, I'm saying it's been decaying over time. Now they just got rid of it exactly because it was ne it just, it just didn't fit. It just didn't fit as well. But um. That's how it is. That's how it is. We're two minutes from the from the actual stream itself, so we're gonna we're gonna move over. Knock fifteen quid off. But like I'm saying, it does it being multiplayer doesn't doesn't detract from the hours or time that you're paying for. You know, like people will happily pay. 70 pound or 60 pound or whatever for like a one and done campaign that they may not even revisit and maybe they just plat or or get everything done in that one run and then it just sits and it gets deleted off or sits on your shelf and you don't play it for any longer um but because it's like the experience that i got from that and maybe i'll revisit it in future people are like yeah that was fully worth its money but it's somehow like cheapen multiplayer as as a general thing as if it doesn't offer the same, or if not longer, longevity, and as if it doesn't offer the same sort of experience, just because it's not like uh, story-wise. That was my one minute to go alarm. So we're we're basically ready to go here. Uh, but yeah, that's just how I feel. Um, I get it, but at the same time, I think people are very pick and choosy about what they're actually wanting to spend money on and kind of overlook things when it suits their argument uh, overall when it's like, you can have good multiplayer games and that's all it can be, you know? Uh, like in this example, the multiplayer element, I'm pretty sure is completely free to play, which is only going to encourage so much more people to come over and play uh, Halo Infinite's online section, you know? And then they're going to make you like probably charge for a campaign that will probably end up being fairly lackluster in most people's opinions we'll see if microtransactions are cosmetics then yeah that's fine yeah 100 percent. i hope they don't just hit us with the microtransactions like after that's what i mean i'm more than willing to pay full price for a multiplayer game but not if i then get shafted with all of the extras uh like my microtransactions and dlc later down the line and things like that you know Oh yeah, 100% there's going to be some level of season pass. Hundred percent.
One thing I think I saw about Battlefield as well is that you can play against bots anyway. And it still adds to your progression. So there's your sort of PvE element, you know? <laughs> there's your your PvE element. This uh, premiere thing's always a lot louder than the rest of the show, so I'm just... If it sounds like uneven at this point in time, it'll probably even out. But for some reason they make this sound like it's super loud. I don't know why they do it, but they do it like that. Battlefield 1 story was amazing, that was two games ago, so I think they just got lazy. I guarantee they have some sort of story like intro, like uh, to get you used to the game as well. Because haven't they done that in the past two games where you get to play like a, it's not full on campaign, but you get like an introduction, um, part cinematic, part playable tutorial almost. I'll throw something like that in. Stay there. Okay, we're ready. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see what they bring to the table. Wonder how long this presentation is going to be as well. Free for free. Just the feeling of like being in a firefight and hearing the, the click of the gun, throwing it down, grabbing one off the wall. My gunner's upside down and he's like laying in. I see kill assist, kill assist, kill assist. Any pistol across any of the games. Whatever gun allows me to feel the most like John Wick, I am there. I remember how excited I was with like this big combat with vehicles going all over the place. This is a really Halo strange intro. Something here for everyone, right? I think that that's what makes Halo great. Let's go, baby. Craig's in the chat. Well, what is Halo multiplayer? And for me, it boils down to this tight arena style combat and big team battle, this wide open vehicle infused uh, kind of combat. We're taking that awesome legacy or classic Halo combat experience and okay. modernizing it in ways that'll feel fresh to old players and really exciting to new players. We're gonna give you great ways to customize your Spartan, really make your super soldier your own, and we're kicking off a journey, an experience that's gonna evolve month to month, season to season, year after year. Of course, season to season. For me, working through this multiplayer of this game, and the toughest challenge I think was really about how do we respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new. We've you don't tried need to, to make it feel new. You just need to legacy nail and really it. inject them into Halo Infinite, not just like in a in a in a way where you kind of won't notice it, where you feel like oh they really designed this to be a celebration of previous Halo, as well as an iteration of where Halo can go next. The vision of Arena was all about a tight experience. It was all about being fair. It was all about earning everything on the map, earning everything, every kill you get. Yeah. Going back to like what is when you the took out the dude who had the shotgun. Made the great that Halo was the one. player arena matches. Great. Halo, it's really about that fair and balanced starts. So everybody's on equal footing when they come off the rip. Yeah. And then once they start running around, it's about scavenging. It's about finding new toys and, and kind of developing your play style as you run through the match. What makes Halo feel like Halo? Um, I feel like uh, the answer to that question is is the sandbox. Like, the sandbox is Halo. When we set out to look at Halo Infinite from a high level and the direction of what it is, there's lots of exciting things there because we really wanted to push what are the things that are true to Halo, but what are the things that fans haven't seen yet? Why, equipment though? Equipment is back, but equipment is kind of, mo uh, has, the, has, a, has a bigger Why? voice than ever before. We ask Why? questions to ourselves of, uh, if you could go after, you know, a power weapon to get a bunch of kills, uh, would you do that? Or could you go and get grapple to make sure that you swing yourself to the other side of a map to back cap a stronghold? We saw that as like another avenue of not just skill expression, but tactics for teams to coordinate around. The exciting combinatory nature of 
okay. you know, this toy plus this toy and how those interact with objectives is super amazing. Looking at how the power-ups play, like your classic power-ups, like the overshield and the active camouflage. For this title, what we're looking at, what we're excited for, is you pick that up and you choose when you activate it. It goes into your inventory. If you haven't used it, they change you know, someone overshield? kills you in multiplayer, you drop that overshield and then they you get changed to overshield? Themselves. That to me is very legacy, but we took the equipment side of it and modernized it. You didn't when it need comes to, do to that. the vehicles, we went in and decided to invest a lot in the, the systems. When I take damage in my warthog, uh, my, my wheels can get blown off, my hood can get blown off. There's different aspects okay. of the vehicle that change how my vehicle handles now. And that's something okay. that's brand new. The other thing we added to that is like this doomsday mechanic. So when you hit this threshold, the vehicle catches fire and it's very much, you've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of time and you gotta choose what you wanna do with the last minutes of this vehicle. We've got a cousin to the Warthog, which is the Razorback. The back has this like multi-storage compartment that you can put a lot of stuff into. So if you wanna put like detached turrets, power weapons, fusion coils, objectives, and that is what really making uh, the Razorback kick a lot of butt. That's pretty cool, campaign. but what the fuck? The levels define pace for the game, how frantic it is, and they define that iconic fantasy for players as they're entering that match. What do they wanna do? Um, what type of experience are they hoping to have? What kind of combat, what kind of dance floor is there available to have that combat in? Some questionable For me, choices. It's all about experiencing uh, the full extent of the sandbox of Halo in just one match, right? Like you see the vehicles, the weapons, the equipment. We really wanted to take that kind of concept, those feels you had, you know, playing the play, playing the previous games, and just turn the volume up. Vehicles are no longer just spawning at bases anymore. We have pelicans delivering them, and we have a commander in your ear telling you that pelicans are going to be dropping off these vehicles. The European tank is inbound. We have oh, that's all right. Halo 2 that's style so Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. That's where it makes it feel like, like a real battlefield and, and it's very exciting. This is not just more players, this is just this certain beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. I'm the not, announcer I'm, is I'm not mad. big gameplay moments, your game modes, just like the way it was before. Play. Personally, I is really a go. reflection and information for the player. Personal AI, designation button. So if a player grabs the flag, your personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base and give you some like moment-to-moment -moment updates. Our team took the enemy flag. What if we can let players choose their own AI, and each one of those are different voices, so that players can find the one that fits their personality and their mood the best? They they add to the sense of like me, as a, as a Spartan, being more important, and, and for us in multiplayer, it is really about becoming a Spartan, your Spartan. You are you inside of the Halo universe. The Why body of customization content AI? that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. That includes things like armor coatings, Suddenly I see why it's uh, free to emblems, play. the cosmetic side. Effects, down to the individual armor pieces, so your shoulders, your gloves, your Are we going to be pads, able to buy helmet, certain visor, things with in-game currency? Is that what's happening weapons, here? We've got a whole slew of customization offerings there. Vehicles yep, I see a have, shop a, have button a huge at the top. pool of customizations, too. It was in there. We support customization in the game. Players can do the same thing on HaloWaypoint.com, as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also customizes the Spartan, the soldier inside the suit. We that want the Spartan even to represent like Halo the right player now. as much as possible. They can change their body type and their voice, as well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player-first mentality. So what that means is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us that everyone understands exactly how they unlock customization content. And we have a variety of places where they can do that. First off is the Battle Pass. The Halo okay, Battle Pass of course. will never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. In future seasons, you can purchase old Battle Passes as well as the current Battle Pass and choose which Battle Pass to put your progression towards. 
All of these rewards are single source, so you're never gonna be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not gonna let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. All customization is just cosmetic. Every season will have its own theme and introduce new components, new looks, new gameplay for players, new opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards. We've seen the, the samurai already. That's one of our event armor cores. That's pretty and cool. And that's gonna be something that players can earn through gameplay for free. With us going free to play for the multiplayer part of the game, like that was a big goal because, you know, how do we have a way we can always bring players in, right? And they can, when we have a new update there, there's, They'll just dip their toes in if they even just want to see it. Not only are we free to play, but we're free to play on PC as well as console. And what that means is we're able to get the biggest audience we've ever had. Everybody gets to play with no barriers. And even better, your progression carries from one platform to the next. Nice. Getting our game to be Very nice. on PC and console at the same time is an amazing chance for us to really just kind of excite new players about the game. How can we do things like make cross-play interesting and like even in just customs being able to just play with your friends that like some people have PCs and some people have consoles and like let them talk to each other let them be friends that's I, I, I like everything they Why said in that section are you here? to be a Spartan the Academy is a place that you can go uh, with an MP to kind of onboard into the experience it's great for newer players who are still picking up the controls and also people who want to warm up before they head into matchmaking it's a series of experiences both a tutorial to get started for the first time weapon drills to practice with specific items and also training mode that you can use to just get warm explore the game as you want to no we don't need that halo let's help them learn it's like right in a bike about some of these characters what what are they about and help them kind of know the vocabulary that people have been speaking for now almost 20 years so that we, when they come in there, they don't feel like they're behind everyone else. They can kind of come in on an even footing. I mean, I'm super jazzed about bots. I think they're awesome. Our goal with bots has been to have a variety of difficulties that kind of provide a good training partner for wherever you're at in the experience. Partnering with our players on the road to launch and after launches absolutely critical, right? I mean, Halo's always been about the community conversation. We want to make sure we hear our players, make changes where we can based on that feedback, make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What I'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands. You know, whether it's seeing what people make in Forge or the content that they're able to create with theater, watching streamers go after the game, to get involved, you go to haloinsider.com, put in your info with your gamer tag, and we should be able to reach out to you if we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. We feel like we've got a pretty good selection at launch and what's going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already and just can't wait to really get into that as soon as this game comes out. New maps, new modes, new ways to customize your Spartan, launches just the beginning. Now we're just gonna be able to talk, interact more frequently, and that's just gonna be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years so far, and uh, I'm looking forward to the Road to launch, launch itself, and beyond. Okay. I mean, the, the multiplayer is infinitely more interesting than the campaign itself. It's how I feel. I don't know about. I don't know what what what, what are you guys overall sort of um. It looks nice, but I sense the reason Play for single player looking the way it is because focus of the staff were pushed onto this project free to play model to keep growing cash potentially. But I also just think they just weren't in a, um, they clearly just weren't ready for what they wanted to deliver, it would seem like, you know? I, I feel like they just weren't ready to sort of deliver Halo Infinite as a thing um, by it being pushed back, by the initial response, by where the campaign originally looked like it was at. 
and people sort of ended up, you know, really, um, they really sort of, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like, they thought it was ready when they showed it originally, and it just so wasn't ready. I don't know if that's because, like you're saying, because they pushed it onwards to the free-to-play element. Um, but at the same time, apart from them saying that they've changed some fundamentals, which I'm just like, well, why have you done that? It looks completely like it's 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 going to do what it needs to do which in my opinion is in 2021 give people a chunk of that uh nostalgia or people that enjoyed the franchise i think it looks like on the multiplayer side of things it's going to deliver it's like if this was 20 12 it would look interesting remember battlefield 3 came out in 2011 and it looked way better than this but you're thinking about this is the thing that i don't understand you're thinking about this in as battlefield versus halo in as you've already made a choice and prefer battlefield as a franchise and what that has to offer in the multiplayer space halo versus battlefield is two comp offering two completely different things halo's always been like an arcadey kind of shooter it's always had that more unreal tournament kind of feel to it uh, and it's always had that sort of like, like there's no super technical elements to p play in Halo uh, overall. Like all of the guns don't have a zoom apart from like two, which is the sniper and the uh, battle rifle and the carbine if you pick up the carbine as well. But overall, it's never been in the same sort of realm as an online shooter as battlefield anyway in the same way that battlefield delivers a completely different experience to playing call of duty like while they may be in similar realms with some of the aesthetics that they've done over time but what you get from playing battlefield is completely different to what you get from playing cod and what you get from playing halo is completely different to both of those in the same way that overwatch is completely different to all three of them as well there's similarities between overwatch and halo more so just because a lot of it you have guns which are really just quite simple in their delivery and stuff but it's all about the spaces that they sit in and as far as like a halo multiplayer game this pretty much ticks most of the boxes that people that enjoy halo multiplayer are going to want from a Halo game. And on top of that, it's free to play, which means it will also offer an extension for more people to play it. Uh, that's how I'm looking at it, and that's, like, that's that's pretty much what it is. Not everything exists in this plane where it goes head to head to head. Like, you have to, it, it's, if that, this is the thing that I think a lot of people don't seem to understand about basic business and marketing and etc. etc. Like, if that was the case, right? There would only ever be one version of everything. You'd only have one pair of shoes that you buy. You'd only have one product when it comes to food. Like, the whole point is things sit in different spaces and still all generate revenue in different ways. That's what business essentially is, you know? Like, they're not here to be like... At, at, at no point are they like, we're going to take... Um, we're gonna we're here to like take away from the call of duty audience or whatever like that or take away from them like that's not the aim the aim is for them to deliver a game that's gonna work on the fan base that they've built up as they mentioned for over 20 years you know that's a lot of people to accumulate from that time so as far as a halo game the things that i don't agree with in part uh, slightly, de A, the cosmetics look like it gets to the point where you're not even running around as a Spartan, but that is what it is. It's understandable that they're going to do this um, sort of situation because they need to make more money, uh, basically, through the Battle Pass and things like that. Um, and then the other side of it is changing some of the fundamentals. I didn't like that there seemed to be a, a bigger push on vehicles. Like, vehicles have always been quite secondary and only part of a big team battle overall. Sometimes you do get a few vehicles. I liked it when you had, like, the quad bike because that wasn't, like, a massively over-the-top vehicle. That sat on most maps, even smaller maps. But there does seem to be quite a bit of focus on vehicles on the whole in this, or at least in the way they were talking. So... It'll be interesting, but I think what's more is like, I wasn't the biggest fan of equipment, but it seems like they've heavily lent into even more equipment and things like timing your your um, 
your shield, uh, your overshield and things like that really do suddenly change the momentum. Part of the having the overshield was the fact that you would only get it the second you activated it and you'd have to go and make an invincible run with it activated. Now, while the overshield is still going to be timed, being able to choose when you want to activate it will definitely change that sort of uh, pressure that came with just running into it and knowing you could only use it for a certain amount of time. So things like that with the uh, equipment itself is a little bit shaky uh in my opinion but i'm not it's not like something i'm super mad at i did like a lot of their thinking towards their delivery i like the fact that they've made it cross play uh for at least their platforms and the fact that you can take that progression over so you can play them whatever you want to depending on how you feel and you can still be connected to friends uh Things comparing them because they both come out soon. So as far as sales are looking, they're going to be compared anyway. Yeah, but at the same time, like Battlefield's open across the platform, whereas this is like dedicated. To, like, do you see what I'm saying? They're selling to a very specific market. So their competition is only with themselves as opposed to being in a situation like they know X amount of people their audience for Battlefield is going to be on their console. That isn't the concern. The concern is how much uh, Halo players can we get reinvested in our console that's come out, you know? It's it's there to try and get people playing Xbox again as opposed to being in competition with other shooters. Um, but I, I see what you're saying. But you know what I mean? Like, you have to look at it. Like, when you make these decisions as a company... You know where you're selling to. They're not. Like, it's, it's not like oh, we're going to open this up to a massively new market. That is ne that's never going to be the case in this situation. Uh, I'm going to go through what you say. Um, they should have made it a Series X exclusive. It could have looked much better graphically. Uh, they are good, but not next gen. Yeah, it doesn't look next gen, which is a, a massive shame. It feels like it's being held back in a part, which is annoying. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I just don't think they're in. A, in a, I don't think a lot of the companies that, that Microsoft have are really in a place to nail the next gen look currently because everything that comes out looks shaky, which is just a, a, a general concern. Um, I fully agree, but we've got to remember the numbers of people that have Series X's is still low due to stock, so that was never an option. Yeah, well, this is the other thing. We're in this like cross point where it is. Uh, it's a little bit. It's a little bit shaky uh, for everything. Yeah, but I don't think it's only about halo they want to slot in with destiny and cod and all the season pass games they can stretch it out uh stretch out that mode for years but yeah like the same time they're still like you can still play halo now like all like an uh, a culmination or whatever the fuck the word is of all of the previous game modes and stuff in the master chief collection so like it is very much. I know it's their space. That's what they're working for. They're they're looking at their numbers and going, this is going to be uh, a space for 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 older fans, for people that came in on the Master Chief Collection, the people that got it through Game Pass and things like that. Um, I don't think the season pass is there so much to keep it relevant. I think that's just how they're gonna have. They're justifying making it free to play. Because they're ultimately like everything now that's free to play. Rocket League has a rocket pass, you know? Why does Rocket League have a rocket pass? It's strange. Um, I feel Halo is just a safe option for Xbox. It peaked with the third one, but they just kind of ship out a new one with every generation to keep the fans happy. Exactly, Trev. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, you know, they know it's never going to be their like ultimate blockbuster or anything at this point in time. But at the same time, they know that it's... It's something that is keyed in. In the same way that Gears has just been thrown out uh, way past the point of Gears being like exciting anymore. It's just some of the few titles that they have that they know are going to be able to shift to X amount of people. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't think they think they're in this massive competition. I don't think that's the end goal at this point in time. I think it's more a thing where it's like basically fan service, you know? That's how I see it, anyway. That's what I think. Looking at it, looking at it overall, um, Rocket Pass. Ha it has Rocket Pass because Epic so owns the game. Yeah, hundred percent. But you know, like anything that's like free to play now is like, well, we have to justify it by throwing in X, Y, and Z. Uh, we need to remember it's not the devs that make the tr microtransactions and everything in games. It's different departments that focus on only that. Yeah, exactly. Like, and they're like, well, you can't just put this game out for free. That's ludicrous. Um, we need to. <laughs> 
They need to somehow make money back, put in a battle pass, and then on top of that, put in extra cosmetics that mean you can buy stuff to make your character look cool. That means people are going to spend money. Um, it's a really solid point. It's better to just cater to their fan base and trying to expand the market. Well, exactly that. That's like when you have a game that's 20 years old, like there's a whole bunch of games that you can look at. Like why do they still make Crash Bandicoot games? Why do they still make Spyro games in, in recent times? Why, why is Call of Duty banged out once a year? Like, you know, like it's funny that it's like, like Call of Duty is only at a point where it kind of is competing with itself now, you know? Uh, like, there's so much things like that, where it's literally just like, why do they keep banging out games instead of focusing on IP? It's the same reason that Hollywood keeps remaking the same movies. It's the reason why Disney has released a series of live-action versions of movies that people already loved and would rather watch the original for, but at the same time, you love it just enough to be like, oh, we're going to have to... Um, we're going to have to go and grab 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 people's attentions you know like basically like that's where it comes down to but as i'm saying overall for a halo game this doesn't look anywhere out of the place um like it doesn't look out of place for for the halo franchise like the multiplayer it looks like it's in a fair enough like good space for what halo's multiplayer needs to be in basically all it really needed to do was slightly update your graphics, keep most of the core mechanics, and throw in enough stuff in general that people go, ah, oh, I'll play that for a bit, and then they get sucked in, and then the nostalgia kicks in, and then pride kicks in, and you're like, well, I need to I need to get good at this game again, and things like that. Or you've just been one of the people that's been banging out the Master uh, Chief Collections multiplayer for years, and they're like, right, I'm going to take all of my skills that i've acquired playing this game that next to no one plays into the new version of the game and go ahead and play it like that you know um that's what i think that's what i think it is at this point in time they did show a little bit of the single player yeah they had a little bit of single player in the showcase that um xbox and Bethesda did heads up bam take two's e3 is just a panel to talk no gameplay showcase very boring to watch i don't think i'm gonna do take twos what i will do is i'm gonna be streaming capcom's panel uh or showcase at 10 30 tonight and i'm gonna be streaming ratchet and clank from 7 30 so that allows me at least like almost two and a bit hours to play some ratchet and clank because i really want to push on with the story and then go into the capcom showcase that's all I'm covering from E3 today because I've done a lot of coverage and like last night even though we got a lot of gameplay and, and trailers and stuff from the future gaming and from PC gaming uh, is it wasn't like super enjoyable or really showing anything that was massively groundbreaking and there was little to no world premieres and stuff so really i think for as far as e3 goes i'm just going to cover capcom because that will be interesting we'll probably get some more monster hunter news because they love their monster hunter news but we might see some other stuff as well and then on top of that tomorrow is nintendo with a four hour showing so that will be interesting to say the least i want to see how they're filling out four hours worth of stuff that sounds like they've actually got a lot to talk about and a lot to show hopefully it won't be a lot of talk hopefully there'll be a lot on show uh capcom's on at 10 30 10 30 uh british british time so yeah it's not for a while so i've got enough time to play some ratchet and clank in between that i'm using pc game pass they had it for one dollar a while back then they cancelled the offer bought it three years if you don't have Xbox, uh, rather wait for the Pro Edition when uh, new games come out in two years. Yeah, well, this is the thing as well. Like, you can play on PC uh, for most of the games like that were advertised in the Xbox showcase were also just on PC. So I, while I might not get an Xbox to play this, I'll definitely play it on PC and give it a go. Um, it doesn't doesn't inspire me to want to get an xbox again but at least i know i can play cross party with my friends and stuff uh even so nostalgia won't be enough to carry it uh for their years to come ideas a constant update is necessary 
hope uh, 343 industry is up for the job that many have failed. I know, but again, like I'm saying, there's people that are still playing Halo multiplayer to this day. Like, those are the people. Sadly, like, I saw a really interesting fact. I think it was Jim Sterling talking about EA, right? Now, the thing that keeps EA's profits pumping in is only, like, 15% of, of their fan base. Something like that. Something like 15% of their fan base attributes to, like, 70 million of their earnings in a year it was some crazy stats i wish i had them written down right so the people that are actually keeping ea pumped like is not the majority of fan base it's actually a really small percentage like quote unquote whales or whatever you want to call them like these people that just really get suckered in um and just keep spending like you know those people that are like have spent thousands on fifa and things like that it's like a fair enough it, it will be thousands of people but it's a small percentage of their overall player base so it's it's a similar thing with like halo uh like they only need x amount of people to get sucked into it and they'll they, it will just keep running for years it'll be interesting to see if they build any sort of esports situations uh out of this I think it was 5%. Yeah, it was like a crazy small amount, Michael, wasn't it? It was a, It's a really small amount, but they power like all of the microtransactions for all of EA. And it's like a really, str it's really strange and also kind of sad that it's so targeted that it just, it just takes, it focuses on in on a really small percentage and just keeps pumping and pumping them until they're like, not dry, but you know, people actually get into situations where they're like, just working to play FIFA or lo like losing money and not spending it in other places, and it's a it's a shocking fact. So yeah, I don't I don't worry so much about this being the next blockbuster. I know a lot of people want it to be the next blockbuster because it's like Halo nostalgia and things like that. But like I'm saying, I think on a on a multiplayer level, it delivers enough that people are like that enjoyed Halo or enjoy Halo multiplayer and it being free to play is more than enough to get people just on board and playing it. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. We will see. Like valid points. Yeah, you're always going to get the people. But this is it. You're, you're always going to have and account for those people that are going to be back like the, the people that play cod exclusively are like the people that play fifa exclusively the people that enjoy battlefield exclusively are the ones that do that the people that are still playing fortnite great example are the ones that are still stuck on that people that play might like you know like all of these games have such a big foothold in the industry that they they know what they're selling to and i think it's just the overall sort of discussion and the console war and all of this stuff that makes it seem like all of these things are like in this massive competition when really a lot of the time they're just delivering on stats that they've already worked out that they have people hired to figure out the finances on and if they can do it and if they're going to recoup and, and and things like that you know uh i think a lot of people overlook overlook it like uh, and, and and put them all into this same space spent four hundred dollars on fifa it's hard not to get sucked in definitely not the finest move in my life well it just happens like it's it like i see that like you see it happen i spent loads on fortnite i still play like i don't even play fortnite but i still end up if there's a skin or something i end up just going in it for like no reason like absolute no reason at all uh like, I'll, I'll log in, I'll buy the battle pass, I'll buy the skin that I want, and then I log out. And then I delete the game, like, weeks later. Like, I don't, it's, a, it's, it's I, I'm sick. Like, I don't understand it. I, I, I'm literally sick. <laughs> you know? Like, it, I, they just get you for something. They just do it. You're like, what do you mean they put the Master Chief? What do you think, think they put Kratos in this? Like, you know? Like... I, I just think Halo is going to play too slow for these audience these days. Everything else is fast and loaded with mechanics. But that's the point in Halo. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. I think it's gambling if you can't see what you're getting. 100%. The massive debate on... The debate overall on... If loot boxes and things like that are gambling, like, it's, it's been, you know, back and forth. But the, the overall situation is, yeah, 100% it is. Uh... 
This is what I mean. The Halo pace of play is is has been the same since it started. It's it's not slow to people that enjoy that gameplay. In the same way that Overwatch isn't like super overbearing to people that enjoy playing Overwatch. Like that's that's what I mean. These these situations are there for people that want to play the game. Like they they they're waiting for a game that feels their speed again. They load up Call of Duty or something, and like, oh, this is too much for me, man. Like, I, I, this is too much kill streaks or whatever. I'm just, I'm just gonna go back and play Halo. Like, Overwatch died years ago. Like, and Overwatch is much younger, but there's still the people that only are capable of playing Overwatch for its gameplay mechanics, and they just, they are just stuck in gold, just hating life every single day. But they still play the game, you know? Like, it's just. That's what I mean about these markets and stuff. They're, they're designed for the people that are already on board with them. Like, people that are picking it up aren't going to suddenly be like, oh, man, this isn't this isn't what I, like, expected. Halo's not playing like Halo anymore. That's why I said the only things that in this um, I'm concerned about are the fact that they've thrown too much of a concern with uh, vehicles and equipment because both of those things never really dominated the situation yes they had them in the game but they didn't dominate the game overall you know so we'll see down the sights i'm not sure if they did they definitely still got the battle i've seen the battle rifle in here a couple times but it seems only scopable weapons kind of have that situation but we shall see we shall see the only time I've seen it zoomed in is with the battle rifle, sniper, uh, the rocket launcher had it. But no sort of like down the sights in any other situation. Um, which is like how it's always been. Like, it's always been like that. So yeah, we shall, we, we shall see. But I just don't think... I don't think people that are buying a Halo game to play a Halo game are going to be concerned with things about, uh, like, the gameplay so much, you know? Like, I don't, I, and I think, I, that, that's just me, but that's, that's, that's ultimately it. You, you're not picking up a, a, a Halo game because you want it to play like other shooters. You're picking it up because you, you're fond of what they do with their sort of approach to it. Because there's a whole bunch of stuff that ultimately can be jarring if you're not used to how Halo plays. Like, even when I pl like played it last year, I was like, wait, what the fuck? Like, because I was so used to aiming down the sights and stuff or playing it like, playing the game like COD or Battlefield. And then I suddenly remembered that I'm playing Halo and I'm just like, oh yeah, this is it. And then you just get back into the pace of it and it just works. Like, it's such a smooth shooter for what it needs to be. But we'll see. Um, I washed my hands of FIFA... Even as a game, it's so poor mechanically. Love football, but hate FIFA. I'm surprised they didn't put out a FIFA Euros game. Like, that seems like something that EA would 100% do. But I'm assuming, did they work it somehow into, like... Um, into all of their things? Like, have, have they just worked it into their current package anyway somehow? I, I feel like that's probably what they do. How come people are complaining about Sony charging... Uh, exclusive games for 70 but EA is charging that for Battlefield well people are complaining about Battlefield as well like people people are massively complaining about ba Battlefield for some reason like people are, are mad at, at Battlefield because it doesn't have a campaign but um, Paradox saying you don't understand how big Battlefield 2042 will be is, is going to be they put all of their money into multiplayer, so it's going to be worth it. Exactly. That's what I was saying at the start. Like, like, it's just... People just pick and choose their arguments for the argument's sake a lot of the time. It's like, oh, it doesn't have a campaign, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna get the same level of quality or enjoyment out of it because of that. Which, okay, if you enjoy narrative games, then yeah, fair enough. But if you enjoy multiplayer games, like, what what do you want? from that you're gonna get like if, if the game has just been invested in in the multiplayer element well guess what it's probably going to be an awesome multiplayer and you're going to get loads of hours out of it and you're going to get a different experience but you're still going to get an experience worth paying full price for overall you know uh 
like, at least with Battlefield, I feel. We'll see. But Battlefield is... Battlefield, if there's one thing that I'd say it does well, is experience. Like, there's, there's few games where, like, you're like, oh, the, 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 I killed someone with the destructive environment and things like that. Like, you know, or, like... I took out that tank. Like, there's so much moments in Battlefield that make it really, really a spectacle uh, and and enjoyable to play. Which again is is completely different to like the parallels of what I enjoy Halo with, which is like Halo is very much reminiscent of that sort of Unreal Tournament feeling. Smaller maps, intense. You die, you go again. You do the best you can, or you dominate the map. Like, a, it's 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 a completely different like. COD is kind of arcadey, but COD doesn't feel as arcadey in that sense. Like, COD's sort of, like, a weird mix of, like, realism with arcade. But, like, the feeling in Halo is just... It's just you're in this small, stupid world where you're just this default, almost Doom guy, but you're not, right? You're just a default player, and you just get in there, and you do what you can with your team, and you hope you win. You know, obviously, you don't hope you win. You play to win and stuff, but it's very... Like the pacing on it's completely different, even though it's 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 just being trapped in. Uh, it's very it's very like sort of like um a fight to the de like team deathmatch is just a fight to the death. I love the moments in Battlefield One where we're hiding in the building and a tank literally took the building down with us in. Yeah, exactly. Like all of those moments. I showed one of those on stream recently where I was I was sniping from one part. No, I wasn't even sniping because I had my assault stuff. I was in the building and then I realized that there's a dude above me. <laughs> and so I just got my anti-tank gun out and shot the rooftop. The roof comes down with the guy. The guy falls down to the ground. The debris lands on him. He dies at the bottom. In front of me. It's beautiful. Like those moments. You, you can't compare. You can't compare, you know? Wonder who will have uh, more player base this winter. Battlefield or Halo? Well, Battlefield in, in theory should do. Because one, you're supporting 128 players per match. Two, it's across every single platform. Both next and current gen. And three, Halo's only out on... Like, yeah, PC. But PC's not going to be the boost for it. Like, Battlefield is across the board. You know? COD feels like Battlefield with the training wheels. Well, COD's just like super arcadey. Like COD, like not super arcadey, but you know what I mean. Like even when they've tried to throw in their Battlefield uh, copycat mode where they've got like big domination with five points and stuff, it just doesn't capture the same level of like scale. I think that's the best way to describe Battlefield is scale of like the scale of warfare is just... You can't beat it, man. You actually can't beat it. And now, with playing with so much more players, it's going to be very interesting, to say the least. Playing with 128, 64 man to a team uh, is is a very impressive, very, very impressive scenario. Um, big fan of these shooters. Big fan of these shooters are deeply embedded in... Uh, what they find familiar and joy to the point where even if their latest game is bad, it's still better to them than good, than a good game from another series. Well, that's what I mean. People pick their... That's it. Once they've made their decision a lot of the time, that's that's what I'm saying. That's what these companies are selling to. They sell to their, their little tribe. COD is just following trends now. They used to be the trendsetters. That's a good way of, of, of putting it across as well. Uh, that's a very good way of putting it across. Um, it's still funny that Xbox fans think their showcase was outstanding, though. It really wasn't. Like, it really wasn't. And I don't understand why they didn't include this in their showcase. They had 90 minutes, and they should have put all of this multiplayer detail stuff in their showcase. Uh, speaking of other things that really didn't do well, I'm still annoyed that I've not been able to kill Chaos yet because the demo for Stranger in Paradise is just not working. I think that's very, very annoying. Um, I'm up, I'm upset about that, if I'm being being honest with you. Pretty upset about that. Uh, what do you think uh, Battlefield gameplay is telling the truth about what you can do in it? I mean, I have no reason to not 
take everything that we've seen in the alpha footage at face value, you know? Like, it doesn't seem like they're pulling any punches, everything in that. Obviously, some of that stuff feels like it was a little bit like scripted gameplay. But at the same time, it didn't... Um, like, all of the things they showed you are, are things that you're used to in, in a Battlefield matchup anyway, you know? The install is chaos itself. Uh... Yeah, hundred percent. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Yeah, it wasn't. It 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 wasn't enough to like sing sing home about or whatever. Like you know, like it wasn't. It wasn't the kind of showcase that you can be like, yeah, we fucking we we did it, boys. We we won e three. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't that in any shape or form, at all. The jet comment is legit. I'd love to jump in and out of a jet. I mean, that's like a, a classic Battlefield move, isn't it? So that in the actual uh, CGI trailer was was a great moment. Um, did anyone see the guy? I can't remember his name. The dude that's like made that sort of move famous. He might not have been the first one to do it, but his gameplay of it, it like went super viral or whatever. Reacting to the fact that they put in that jet moment into the CGI. That's quite cool. Uh... Xbox fanboys are so thirsty for something that if they get fed a little bit, they go over the edge. But I mean, at this point in time, if you're involved in uh, quote-unquote console wars, I think people just go over the top about anything. And I think more realistic, like just general... I want to call... Uh, what do you call non-console war fans? There we go, Resden Zook. There we go. I think if you're not in that, then you can be a lot more sort of, not honest, but like, you know, I've seen people put their hands up and be like, oh, it was, wasn't the best showing and things like that, you know, but I am excited about X, Y, and Z and things like there's, I think there's one side of the internet that's like, can just be humble with it. And then there's another side where it's like, just ready to. It could be anything. You know, it could be literally anything where they just throw in. They'll be like, we have this extra cosmetic and people like will go and just die. Literally die on the hill. Console pacifists. Yeah, I, that's, I like that. The console pacifists. But you know what I mean? Like it gets to a point where there's just people are willing, like no matter what it is, are just, they're ready. They're ready. They've got their pitchforks and such sharpened and they're like we're gonna fucking we're gonna die for this baby <laughs> like uh, and, uh, uh but i think yeah i think that just comes massively into it like you should be able to look at it and go sheep yeah i mean people are sheep to a degree but you know like there's things i liked about this there's things that i don't like about this i don't like how it looks i think it should look a lot better i don't like the fact that they've messed around with the equipment and stuff um do I think this is going to win any sort of multiplayer game of the year situations? No. Do I think it's going to deliver for people that are fans of the franchise? Yes. You know, it's just being able to look at what you want from a situation and be be able to word it in a way. Because I think what, what, what happens is it's just people just make baseless accusations. You know, they just go, that was trash. And it's like, well, why was it trash, bro? Can you, can, can you expand... You know, or are you just right, saying you're just you're just going with a, a bunch of buzzwords that people have, uh, and no actual opinion? You know, like you should be able to like critically look at things and uh, and have an informed piece of an opinion on it. But people just go, no, it's shit, no, your console's trash. You're you're a trash gamer because you play on this console. You're whack. Blah blah blah. It looked terrible. Blah. Like you know, like it's just like the same sort of dialogue that keeps getting repeated over and over when you should be able to look at things critically because that's how you you make decisions as a human being but i could be wrong you know uh i could be completely wrong feels like 500 million is is a bit too much for what we're looking at yeah a hundred percent like it i don't know where it's gone because it's not gone into it's not gone into the marketing, <laughs> you know? And it's not clearly not gone into all of the elements. 
that have put this game together. But then at the same time, when you consider that this is coming out for free, maybe part of that 500 million is just to cover costs that they're not going to make back. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't look like quality, which is a shame. Like, it should look really, really good. Uh, I even sometimes crash my jet and the enemy follows it to the... <laughs> you bait them in. Yeah, smart. Rarely do I find people who are good at vehicles except tanks. Yeah, people in tanks are just like... They're just bastards in Battlefield. Like, you're trying to get away. And then the thing is, if you get killed a couple of times by a tank, then what you need to do is, like... You want to try take them out, and then that it results in more death a lot of the time. Uh, Microsoft had a good conference, especially for them, without factoring in Game Pass on a game per game basis. Nothing moves the needle in comparison to Sony. Yeah, exactly. Like, and this is it as well. You got to look at like what 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 they've done well for their fan base and stuff is they are providing them with X amount of all right looking games. Nothing looks great. I think. A lot of yesterday's conference was just caught in, or the conference, I can't even remember what day it was anymore because it's all mushed into one. But I think the conference uh, overall, like, doesn't have anything that really looks next gen, which is quite disappointing for the fan base over on Xbox. But at least they're trying to provide as much as possible for, like, the bang for buck on Game Pass, which is, like, admirable. But I also worry if that just means that, like, they're constantly going to keep getting more and more games that look like sort of just current gen because the game pass caters to all you know i don't understand why people insist on twerking for billionaire companies just play your games and enjoy them exactly trev like uh, we were talking about this yesterday at the end of the day we're still all consumers and stuff like I know I'm being rough on the game, but I was really hoping to see Halo go to the next level. I would have bought a Series X for this game if they'd done something amazing with it. Yeah, I. that's the thing. It's, it should be a console seller. But as I'm saying, it just seems to... They've just made their choices. It just seems like they've just made their choices. And they're just like, we're just going to sell to our... Like, you know, sadly, like the EA method, where it's like, I'm just going to sell... To people I know that are going to buy our stuff. Which is, I don't agree with. Because it's like, you know, they're not trying to push out and get new fans. But it is, it just seems to be people, oh, we'll get most of the audience of people that like Halo with this. You know? So it's, 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 it's sad. I really hope we do see the Switch Pro tomorrow. I feel like that would be a big win for so. uh Sony for Nintendo, it put them in a, in a better place. It put them closer to Sony than uh, Microsoft currently is. Because, like, you know, at least they have a good array of overall um, IP. Like, I think N Nintendo have really good, do a good job on IP. And that's not just in their sort of... Um, in their games, but also in their innovation with the way that they do things with their consoles as well. So hopefully we'll see a Switch Pro. That would be awesome. Um, like Kid Smooth, if you guys know him. Everyone knows Kid Smooth in recent times. He's done enough to rile up all of the Sony heads and the ponies and everything. Uh, I, I think he's, he's, he's become quite synonymous with the current... He's like definitely in... It, if, you're, if you're talking console wars, like he's definitely like a commander, isn't he? He's up there. He's he's a higher ranking culprit in the console wars. Uh, he believes he is Microsoft. He is Xbox. Yeah, exactly. Like he's he is general Xbox. You know, um, if they get a good Metacritic score, he believes he scored that score like he made the game. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's just it's just crazy. I've been a Sony fan since PS One, but. Uh, be buying a series x for game pass well this is the thing that like i said the smart move about subscription gaming is it's not just a game pass you can also get a package that includes paying off the series x as well so for for a lot of people that's 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 a mass appealing you know you can't deny that like that's a big appeal to people especially as i've said previously for parents in a situation where their kid wants a console it's a lot easier to buy the console on finance as well as pay off the like they get all of the games through the game pass as well like it's a it's a it's a part of the market that they're aiming for which makes sense um 
that can work to their advantage. It is the one sort of little thing that they have, and it's not so much over PlayStation, but it's just it's the only thing sort of keeping them relevant at this point in time. Uh, OC Reed saying too much first person shooter games and don't care for a racing game, which sadly uh, is Microsoft's best game yet. I mean, Forza looked really, really good overall, it did. Uh, the sad part about it is I do think there's just too much of a push on first person shooters. But again, that's that sort of like Hollywood approach to gaming, like I'm saying, you know? Is, uh, it's like, oh, the biggest games in recent recent past 10 years or things like that has been first person shooters or they're looking like at the older market the games that really busted open gaming have been like first person shooters so they're like well we have to keep producing first person shooters and it's it's one of those things that's always going to get green lit when you take it to someone they go okay yeah well, tell us about this game and they go oh well it's um post-apocalyptic world and they go um, okay okay uh, that's a safe bet yep uh, if you look at games that have been successful most of them have fallen into either sci-fi fantasy or you know like post-apocalyptic fantasy that that sounds good to me uh what what do you do in this world well you sort of scavenge for materials ammo and other such things and upgrades okay yeah that sounds yep that that's the sort of rpg kind of element that we, that, that we need in games nowadays okay cool 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 uh and uh, how do we take out en enemies will be kind of like alien or like zombie type things like infected people yeah yeah that sounds that sounds pretty good to me as well that's uh, that, that, that seems to check out and um how do we kill these people well uh you have a gun you, you have an array of guns overall uh, and you can upgrade these guns sometimes and get different ammos and attachments for them and you just kind of have a gun and you just shoot them all and they go oh so it's a first person apocalyptic survival shooter with maybe zombies or aliens and they go they go yeah 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 yeah, yeah actually that's what it is and they go you know what here's 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 a couple million go and make your game sir we'll put it on the game pass you know, <laughs> like, and that's it. That it happens so much. It happens so, so, so much overall. Like, so, so, so much. Um, sounds unique. Ubisoft furiously scribbling down notes as Pam's piece. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just exactly what they do, man. It's they do it so much. Why did Phil Spencer think claiming? Uh, what did you think of Phil Spencer claiming Xbox puts out their highest quality games on the market? I think Phil Spencer is probably high on his own supply and is just not the greatest. Like I, you know what? You know what? I this okay. I feel Phil Spencer and his dream for what he wants is very, very, very different to what. Microsoft executives and such want from gaming you know I think I think that's what it is massive I think that's what happens so he goes out to these conferences and he says all this stuff and feels like fighting the good fight on behalf of his <laughs> his people and his developers and everything and then he comes back <laughs> and he goes into the boardroom and they're just like Phil you know we can't we can't do anything of the stuff you promised today, right? And he's like, I know, but I just want to give him hope. And he's like, but you know we don't give a fuck about anything you say. Just go out there and stick to the script, Phil. And he's like, I will, I will. And they're like, no, Phil, seriously, stick to the fucking script, all right? Just just stick to the script, okay? None of, none of this. Like, you know, if Bill Gates himself has to turn up, Phil... It's, it's over. I, I, do I need to tell you anything more? You think microchips that he's put in, in, in vaccines is bad? Wait until you see the fucking robots for torture he's designed, okay? Just stop it, Phil. Just fucking stop it. Like, I just think, I just think it's just all gas, and he just promises, and he thinks if he can save his stuff, then people will like look cotton onto it, and and they'll start promote promoting it, and they'll be all like. Yeah, this sounds really good for the future of Xbox. And then he can go back into the boardroom and be like, but people like my ideas, so we should do them, right? And they're like, Phil, what if I told you? 
what have I told you? You know, like, because there's always people behind the scenes, the money men. Um, the money men are always behind the scenes, making sure that things go exactly how they want it to. Uh, <laughs> uh, just got here. Uh, what conferences are we streaming? Well, I'm almost done with this stream. It's just been nice just chatting with everyone uh, and not focusing on like, because I know we've we've watched a lot of stuff over the weekend, but we actually haven't uh had a lot of discussion we've had some some discussions but we haven't had much discussion so it's been nice to just sort of talk with people and see what you guys are saying and stuff um but only one tonight is capcom which is a bit later like a little bit later uh gonna do capcom at 10 30 but then before that at 7 30 i'm gonna be doing some Ratchet and Clank gameplay because I haven't really had a chance to push on with the story and this is the first opportunity because E3 is taking a little bit of a dip. So yeah, going to be doing Capcom because I assume there's actually going to be some gameplay and stuff like that on that. Uh, Nintendo tomorrow, four hours as well. Uh, we just had a look at the Halo multiplayer overview, which I'm fighting the good fight for and saying it looks exactly what I expected so I'm not mad at it in any, sh in any shape or form. I'm not mad at that t-shirt. It's coming soon. At the very least, a mug or something. I think an I'm not mad at that mug would be great. Because people would be talking shit to you. And you just sip on your mug saying I'm not mad at it. I don't know. A mug could be a, a, a good use of that. Uh, <laughs> I also want to get like... I don't know how I do these. Because I, I don't believe in doing... Um, merch really and i think you can't really do much like you can i've seen people with a lot smaller followings do merch and stuff like that but i always think releasing merch that has no real purpose is quite arsey like i think like like if i was to put like my face or my t my name or something on a t-shirt that's really arsey like you know i think it's just like really up yourself and narcissistic but if if i can make some t-shirts that actually w or something that would adapt into real life then i'm like well maybe i do that or something that just looks nice to wear you know um but i do think it's like people just get some form of a following and as we're talking about ea and stuff earlier where it's like you know just pumping whatever fan base they have for more money and things like that i think people just go right i'm gonna sell a t-shirt with my logo on it or something. and it's like you don't you don't need to do that man you do, like, like just make something that looks nice get it at, get an actual nice design and put that out and if people like it they'll buy it and stuff but what what, what we're not gonna do is have like everyone in a sh shirt that says Bamalam or something stupid something stupid like that you know I'd much rather uh, try and get like I'm not CGI or something on it something like kind of witty but also comes from the stream in some shape or form. Uh, Bamalam uh, Pogs, that would be awesome. Uh, but yeah, like PewDiePie has some cool merch. Yeah, like because PewDiePie actually has a clothing brand that isn't just specifically like PewDiePie. He actually has some good clothing and gamer clothing and things like that, you know? So I think if I was ever to do that, I'd really want to work on something that, 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 that A, I would buy myself. And B fits into the world of fashion in some shape or form, you know. But you know, like maybe some I'm not mad at that mugs or something like that would be would be cool. Over like I don't know, you know. I I, I never know, and that's why I've never tackled anything like that ever. Uh, I had some exclusive run T-shirts back in the day, but that was when I was battling, and it was a collaboration with a brand that I really um, respected, and we did like a limited edition 30 run T-shirt, and and they all sold, so that was cool. Um, and they were really nice t-shirts. I have a t-shirt out that I have no control over. Can I see if I... Let me see if I can bring it up. I didn't... They, some guy literally messaged me and was like, Can I can I make a Bamalam t-shirt? Uh, and I was like, Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, that sound... Yeah, why not? Do it, mate. Blur, just do it, right? Um, and then I was at a battle event. And this was in recent times. I was at a battle event and guy just had me on his t-shirt. Just had my like not even my face. It uh, how do I find it? how do I find it? Let me see if I can find it. It was it, it, it was strange to say the least. Let me see if if if, if I've got the guy on face. Ah yeah, here we go. Here's the page. Let's see if I can find it. It was very it was very strange to 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 to, to just be walking around. <laughs> I got I got it here. 
There's a guy here. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> look, look at this. Um, I have my print shop up and running pretty soon. Let me know where to ship things, and I'll send you a custom shirt with original artwork on. One of a kind. That would be awesome, Brett. That would be so awesome, man. I really love that. I massively appreciate that. Um, so, <laughs> it's an outline of a face that doesn't even doesn't even really have my face shape. Um, is is the first is the first thing. It doesn't really have my face shape. And then it just says Bamalam inside <laughs> inside of it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, so I'm just walking around this event and then I just see him in it. And I forgot that I said, yeah, sure. If you think that's something that can sell, then, then, then go ahead and make a couple or whatever. But I don't know if they sold any or whatever, but I, I liked it. I didn't get I didn't get one. I feel like they could have sent me one. The word, it just says Bamalam over and over and over and over. I feel like, you know, they could have sent me one, man. They could have, they could have definitely sent me one. But it is what it is. But, yeah. Um, I think if I was ever to do merch, I'd probably just sell, like, brown afros with fake Ray-Bans. I think that would be my merch. Looks like an odd-shaped acorn. Yeah, the shape doesn't match my face. It doesn't match my face. That's the, that's the thing I was most concerned about. Really doesn't match my outline, you know? <laughs> like... Um, but yeah, still cool. Still cool that someone wanted to do that. I don't know. Let me, let me see if I can find the original Bamalam design. I'll show you the, the original t-shirts from back in the day, back in the old days. If I can find these, I'll show you, uh, what would it be under? What would it be under? Probably timeline photos. God, I, I rarely go on Facebook these days. Um, wait, hang on. That's me with Sarah J. Yeah, you, you guys know Sarah J. If you do, if you do, you, you know, you know, it's the legend, the legend Sarah J, where we interviewed her for a podcast. Um, oh God, it's got to be in here. It's the time I battled a shoe as well. It's when I battled a shoe in France for a Foot Locker. Go back to the Sarah J photo. There we go. Sarah J, legendary. Um, where is it? I know it's in here. Oh, I did have t-shirts before, bright side was ones, but I never sold them. Here we go. There we go. Fuck. There we go. I really like these ones. Pam's doing casting couch. <laughs> well, I watched the show, uh, Capcom showcase. I will do at ten thirty. I will do, but um, there we go. Back in the day, really cool T-shirt design. I thought it was really cool. I used to wear hats a lot then, so obviously it's, it's got the hat. He doesn't have the afro, uh, and don't really care to be honest because uh, in a battle. In my first international... Why does it have nipples? Because it does, bro. It's bare. It's a little bare. Um, we all got nipples. This is, that's nature, bro. Uh, but it'd be weirder if he didn't have nipples. <laughs> um, that's a good point, though. Why didn't he have, like, a t-shirt on or something? I guess you wouldn't be able to see he's a panda bear if he didn't. Um, but, yeah, very good point. R.I.P. Rhyme Square went out of business and so on and so forth. But, yeah, uh, back in the day, I did a battle, my first international battle, where I was battling a Canadian guy. And he was, like, choking and not getting his rhymes out. And he was like, what, what do you think I was going to say next? And I was like, I, I, I don't really care, to be honest. So that became a, a slogan that got put on a t-shirt. What do I think of E3 so far? Um... Not the greatest showing. There's been some some diamonds among the dirt. But I'll tell you one thing. I didn't think that E3 was going to look so current gen this year. I was really hoping for... I was really hoping for a lot more across the board, if I'm being honest with you. Like, just... Just this sort of like future, like, oh yeah, we're going to we're gonna do this and we're going to do that. And like, just good looking gameplay. And I've just not seen lots of that. And that's also because coming off of the back of playing Ratchet and Clank. 
you've got these expectations that are up here now. There is big rumors that Sony are going to do their own event very, very soon. Probably a big state of play in the next few weeks. I don't have an exact date, but there's murmurs and stuff about that on news outlets and happening online. So probably maybe a July situation. I'd be surprised. I think if I was Sony, I'd probably drop it at the end of the month. I'd have a really solid month, you know, like a really, really solid month. Just let people enjoy all of the stuff they've released for this month. Let everybody play Ratchet as much as possible. Let people enjoy the uh, intermission and integrate of Final Fantasy and Guilty Gear and all of that stuff that's come out this month. And then go straight into just being like, oh, and we've actually got an hour event where we show you some future stuff. Here's a little slight preview of God of War as well. You know, E3 just feels soulless without Sony. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, this is like, you expect them to pick up the slack. You expect them to pick up the slack, you know? Like, there should have been more of a focus on Battlefield. There should have been more of a focus. They should have run this this segment. This How long is this? This 12-minute segment should have been part of Xbox's showcase. You know, it should have been. Um... More focus on the good stuff. And there wasn't enough focus on the good stuff. It was very, very padded out with CGI trailers across the board. Uh, Elden, Elden Ring was a great trailer. But a deep dive into Elden Ring would have been even better on top of that. You know? Like, what was on show should have been given more. Jurassic World Evolution 2. That should have been given a much more deep dive depth. And that got coverage across maybe three or four different panels. So... I think just bad decision making and pacing really brought down E3 overall. And I also think that this disjointed way of putting it all together and having it like there's really not that much actually going on. So they really should have consolidated this. They didn't need to run it into the week. They should have consolidated this so everything ran through the course of the weekend because it's all digital, you know? Like, they should have had it all consolidated into Friday, eve Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Nintendo's four-hour thing should have been a part of that. Capcom today should have been a part of that. You know, all of it should have been consolidated into one, one really, really good showcase that just made that just kept hitting you with stuff after stuff after stuff but instead it's all been dragged out and technically like Elden Ring was part of the Games Fest stuff you know like Summer Game Fest had 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 a bigger impact with like Day of the Devs and and their stuff was really really well put together Devolver Digital was great like there was some really good moments but it just should have all been just packed in for excitement's sake so we'd talk about it all over the course of the week and felt like, wow, there was so much stuff. Um, oh, and Bandai as well. Bandai's got something tomorrow as well. So, so yeah, like throwing in all of that kind of stuff would have just made sense. Uh, Elden Ring only being a CGI trailer. No, there was elements of gameplay in that, I'm pretty sure. There were, there were some gameplay elements thrown in there, just like sprinkled in. What do I expect from Take-Two Interactive? Uh, nothing really. I haven't looked at any... I haven't pre prepared anything for that, so I have little to no opinion. Um, and someone said that their thing's just going to be mainly talking, so I'm like, alright, we can skip that. I'm not really down with the talking conferences. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not at a TED Talks. I, I don't care. You know, IGN actually got a breakdown on Elden Ring trailer. What? With Miyazaki himself? All right, that's pretty cool. But you know, all of this stuff should have been included into a consolidated, really good showing. Uh, I'm just pointing out that Absus is more notable and brings down brings the whole thing down. Yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with that as well. Uh, it wouldn't have hurt him to, and they haven't been completely absent either. There's been hints of stuff, and a lot of the stuff that. Xbox showcased is coming out on PlayStation anyway and like they were part of Square Enix and like you know they they've had little sprinklings in so they're not completely absent but like actually being there and delivering a state of play would have really helped boost this up but they didn't need to do that because they're being smart with their delivery um it's a shame though 
because I do feel like it should just be a big celebration. And with it being digital this year, completely digital, it wouldn't have been hard for anyone to just throw something in, you know. But yeah, as I said, I think the biggest problem has been the overall scheduling and uh, the lack of next gen feeling stuff overall, which is which is a, a, a shame. In three years, I think Jeff's conference overtakes E3. Well, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with you. And they were kind of strange with their dealing of Jeff as well because they didn't approve him as a co-stream for E3 itself, but they approved loads of other create, like other random creators, which is a little bit shady, but also not super shady. But um, yeah, I can see Summer Game Fest. If Summer Game Fest collaborates heavily with IGN's uh, Summer of Gaming, and together they can muscle out E3 quite heavily. And if they can get Sony on board for Summer Game Fest, then yeah, they can easily swallow E3 in a matter of years. Especially with things now being pushed heavily into the online space. What Jeff's and everyone, uh, Jeff's team and everyone did at the Game Awards in general last year was deliver solid showcases uh, completely digitally and remotely. Uh, and obviously, when we get back up to conferences being a thing, cons, whatever you want to call them, uh, being a thing, then yes, maybe there'll be some more excitement and such like that. But I'm not, I'm not mad with it being digital, having been in England, you know, because we can't, I can't attend an E3 easily anyway. So I just wish they had put it all into one nice accessible thing for everybody around the world, uh, which is. Kind of what the future of gaming should be anyway, you know? I think these uh, fully prepared presentations, like Devolver Digital, I know like they have a history of putting on a show at E3, but they put on an even greater show being able to pre-produce it, you know? Like the pre-production value of what they put together was really fun and exciting. And I think State of Plays have really shown how easy it is to put together a good hour-long presentation that doesn't get boring or stale, really. So, yeah, it's not been the best showing, but we've made the most out of it. And I'm really appreciative for everyone that's joined me for any elements of this. Uh, I just feel like they should have done a better job in places, you know. So we will we will see. I'm going to leave it here because I'm going to go sort out my dinner. I'm streaming at 7.30, so I've only got like two hours to go. Ratchet and Clank, really looking forward to playing some more Ratchet and Clank, like legitimately super excited for it. I need to set up my Capcom stream as well. Uh, it's really hot, so it's just nice to like not have the lights on for a little bit of time uh, and give my camera a little bit of a rest as well. But yeah, it's super boiling hot at the moment, so I really like to uh, turn the lights off a little bit. But I am thankful for everyone that stayed about and we've had a good old chat about everything. Um, and once again, thank you to the to everyone who's a member of the community because everyone keeps it respectable overall. There's no there's no real mudslinging. Everyone just has an actual validated opinion, and and, and we see where each other's coming from, uh, which is which is really important, you know. Um, and it's good to have these dialogues where it's not like any one sided opinion. It's everyone's disagreeing but not arguing and and throwing what they feel into it and i think that's really important i think that's something that that needs to be here you know we need more of that in general in this point in time because i think i think ultimately a lot of people have got so used to being alone in the past year and a half uh did they forget how to speak to people especially when it's operating through a screen <laughs> you know like so it's nice to actually have these uh genuine conversations and discussions so there we go. Uh, multinational companies, I've moved on. They have enough muscle to stand on their own. Decisions have to be made in the context of listening to the consumer more after all we play the games. Yeah, 100%. And I think, I think as we move into this more digital age, you definitely are seeing a bit more of a back and forth dialogue between creators of the games and the audience. Like, influences definitely play a part in this now. I think if that wasn't the case then we wouldn't have games being pushed back and and you know changes being made because people realize that they can actually push the schedule back if it means that they can work on stuff that people are giving feedback on that's why i'm annoyed about this stranger in paradise demo not working because they actually want to put a 
an open feedback on Pat Stranger in Paradise for the fans, and yet the demo's not working. So that's annoying. Thank you all. I might even go find an ice cream. Uh, you're all lovely. You're all lovely. Great people. I'll catch you in a couple hours for some Ratchet and Clank, hopefully. Take it easy.